You may already know that when the pilot applies a bank with ailerons and the aeroplane starts to turn, the outer wing travels faster than the inner wing and generates more lift. Just like on a merry-go-round, the outer seats really feel the speed. On an aeroplane, this causes the bank angle to want to increase more. In a climbing turn, there is a second effect. In a climbing turn, both wings climb through the same amount of height. However, the outer wing travels a greater horizontal distance as it is on the outside of the turn. Consequently, the relative airflow that the outer wing experiences is shallower than the steeper relative airflow of the inner wing. The angle of attack of the outer wing is therefore greater than that for the inner wing, thus the outer wing generates more lift. This is called overbanking in a climbing turn and causes the bank angle of the aeroplane to want to increase more and more. What do you think happens in a descending turn? In a descending turn, the outer wing travels faster and wants to produce more lift, just like in a climbing turn. In a descending turn, both wings descend through the same amount of height. In a descending turn, the outer wing travels a greater horizontal distance as it is positioned on the outside of the turn. But because the aeroplane is descending, the steeper relative airflow acting on the inner wing causes it to have a greater angle of attack than the outer wing. The inner wing generates more lift. This is called underbanking and it may, or may not, cancel out the first overbanking effect when turning and descending. What is your real life experience with overbanking and underbanking in climbing and descending turns? Please share in the comments below.